the noble lord the minister had shown me his speech before he gave it today because i could have gone through it with a red pen because actually repeating wishful thinking is not making it happen so mayor might is not a policy and i will now describe what the government's energy policy policy should be and i'm really happy to send this directly to the minister in case he's got any doubts about what i'm what i'm saying so if we had insulated britain then people wouldn't be choosing between heating and eating. And if we hadn't cut the green crap, as Cameron said, over the last decade, we'd be saving £2.5 billion off energy bills. And if we hadn't had a Tory government for the past 12 years, we'd be doing a lot better than we are now. Renewable energy was cheaper to produce than gas, even before the big explosion of oil and gas prices in recent months. There's now a huge gap between what it costs to produce renewable energy and what it's sold for as part of the national grid. If renewables now dominated the energy sector in the UK, then everyone will be buying electric hogs and ovens as gas prices soared and electricity prices continued going down. Rich and poor would all be better off. The planet would be better off. The only people not better off would be the fossil fuel uh, companies like Shell. Uh, but I think we could manage without their doing particularly well, personally. Um, we've got the perverse situation where green consumers who want green energy are paying extra because you have an energy system dominated by fossil fuels. So, for example, if someone is selling electricity from the national grid, why are they only getting five and a half pence per kilowatt hour when it's being sold back to them for 21 pence per kilowatt hour? I understand that producers... Do, operators do have costs to pay, but those, produ those small-scale producers, those homeowners, ought to be getting at least twice what they are now. I've got a lot of questions. That's probably the first question. Um, now, if gas producers are pushing up the price of electricity, then why are households with renewables not getting more for their investment? Why are the fossil fuel giants the ones being rewarded for destroying the planet and ripping off consumers? That's another question. Um, now, I know that the Conservative Party receives millions of pounds in donations from the oil and gas industry. We've actually discussed it in this chamber before. I mean, for example, the Prime Minister got something like uh, £2 million in donations, possibly uh, from Russians, possibly oil and gas producers, since he became Prime Minister. The case for a dirty fuel tax is overwhelming, and I wish everyone in this House, in this debate, would support a move that benefits the planet and consumers. So perhaps uh, that is another question. Why not have a dirty fuel tax? Unfortunately, we have a government in the pay of the oil and gas industry that has agreed the price cap for consumers going up by 50% in April. By contrast, households in the uh, feed-in tariff scheme selling electricity to the national grid are tied to the retail price index, which will go up 7.5%. Now, this is a decision by the government. Why is that? The potential for solar on the roofs of houses, warehouses, shops is absolutely massive. And this is the year when government should be giving it the biggest push by upping the amount that people are paid. Getting solar panels on more rooftops could make us far less re reliant on gas in future years. Removing the planning block on wind farms supported by their local community would stop reliance on foreign gas. In fact, bringing back all the green crap would make us more independent and more energy secure. It's actually progress, I will give the government this credit, that the government has removed the arbitrary cap on how large solar farms can be, but why are we still building new houses and warehouses without basics like solar panels? In fact, why are there any new houses being built that are not actually net producers of energy? That's another question. Uh, we know how to do it. We know that new houses in the decades to come will have to be built that way. They'll have to be retrofitted. So why don't we do it now? The clever engineers at the National Grid say they can be ready for net zero by 2025. So why can't we make this happen sooner rather than later? Another question. Why can't we use the technology we have to make renewables the dominant source of our electricity within the next three years? Another question. And why can't we scale up the use of emerging technologies of battery storage and hydrogen production to capture all that renewable energy in a form we can use to power vehicles, houses, factories, when we need to use it? If we show that solar panels are an investment that really pays off, then more people will see the logic of heat pumps earning the money back. Making Britain independent of foreign gas supplies is a side, a side product, a side benefit of going renewable. The main reason, obviously, being the climate crisis. 
Now, Greens are often accused of wishful thinking, but in my view, and in the view of an increasing number of people, we are actually the realists. The reality is that we have the technology to reach net zero carbon emissions in the next few years. What we don't have is the political will. The government's wishful thinking is that it can keep using oil and gas, even beyond 2050, instead of using all the potential sources of renewables. The government is relying on non-existent greenhouse gas removal technologies, more wishful thinking, to square this circle in reaching net zero. This is the wishful thinking of politicians who have taken dirty money from the dirty fuel industries. I'm sure the noble lord, the minister, knows that Germany has just cancelled the Nord Stream 2 natural gas pipeline, the undersea uh, pipeline, um, and is saying that they will overhaul their energy supply, supply strategy. I would so love the government to do this, and I would give them full credit for it. Now, another bit of wishful thinking is the government's approach to waste incineration. This has driven me mad since I was a councillor. It's good that the government states the amount of electricity that can be generated from energy from waste is constrained by the availability of its feedstock, which is set to reduce further by 2035 as a result of government policy. However, unless you stop local authorities building an excess of new incinerators across the country and signing up to legally binding contracts for the next 25 or, or even 35 years, then the words have no meaning. Money talks and the contracts require councils to burn, not recycle. So in some areas, recycling is going down because of the incinerator contracts that's, that councils have signed. Burning waste instead of recycling is bad for air pollution and obviously bad for the climate. Can the government commit that they will not allow the import of waste from abroad for burning in UK incinerators? Now, nuclear... I know we had the debate yesterday, and my noble friend Lady Bennett and Manor Castle obviously demolished the government's arguments for, for nuclear. <clears throat> but I will say now that nuclear is not needed. We are developing tidal and wave power. Houses are leaking less heat when they're insulated. We have more efficient batteries as well as the conversion to hydrogen gas. The storage of energy is becoming an everyday thing, whether that's in the car or a battery on the side of a house. In the coming decades, more and more houses and communities will become net producers of energy. Are we really seriously expecting them to buy nuclear energy from Hinkley at three or four times the price they're producing it for themselves? Nuclear is dangerous. It leaks. It produces waste we don't know how to dispose of. And above all, we have to build new plants on the coast in an age of rising tides. Every single IPCC report since 2007 has increased the worst-case scenario for sea levels. Sizewell Sea has a massive sea defence system, um, the height of 18 metres, based on the 2018 IPCC analysis. But that worst-case scenario is already out of date this year. And so if we do build nuclear power stations, uh, they will become islands uh, awash with seawater. So the government's energy strategy needs to abandon the idea of balance based on dirty fuels, whether fossil or nuclear. It needs to do its bit to mitigate the climate emergency by fast-tracking the cheaper solutions of renewables and insulation. And it needs to show some bravery and create a dirty profits tax that will encourage clean energy. So, in short... The green national policy on energy would be good for the planet, good for consumers, and independent of Russian gas and the flux of world prices.